Hello, I'm Landry Jones, Conservation Grazing Specialist for MFA Incorporated. Today we're out here on my farm in Dade County, Missouri. Um, and if you've been following along, this is the 20 acres of native warm season grass that I established two years ago. This is 2021. Um, and just kind of wanted to bring you all out here to, to show you, you know, what the stand looks like. Um, if you were kind of following along with the videos before this and, and, and was kind of looking at the steps I took to get here, um, hopefully that'll help you if you're thinking about establishing native warm season grass. And so just to kind of take a step backwards in 2020, uh, the spring of 2020, I came in here and, and, um, used a non-selective herbicide and, and killed all existing vegetation that was in this field. And that was an early, early spring. And then in uh, early May came in here, um, and sprayed about four to six ounces of panoramic or the active ingredient of Mazepic herbicide on this field and drilled about 10 to 12 pounds of uh, big blue stem and Indian grass into this field in early May. And it was not ideal planting conditions. We were, we were pretty wet last spring, um, but I had a sh small window and it was, you know, it was early May and felt like I needed, it was kind of now or never and went ahead and put them in and, and got a decent stand. Um, it was a little thinner than I would hoped. And mainly that was just planting condition, you know, just that seed to soil contact wasn't ideal. Um, uh, but but had a, had a good stand. Um, I did have some summer annual weed issues um, last summer and came in and, and sprayed another six ounces of uh, panoramic on this field to help with those summer annuals um, and got a, got a pretty good control on that. Um, had to do use some other method, did some wicking with some Roundup to kill some Johnson grass that I had some issues with. Um, but for the most part was, was pleasantly surprised on, on the stand. We got some moisture late in the summer and, and got a pretty decent stand. There were still some bare areas um, that I came back in actually this past winter and, and broadcasted some more native grass seed in those bare areas to hopefully kind of fill in. Um, and, and so that turned out real well. Um, this spring, um, I had some issues with some ragweed. I had ragweed that came in um, pretty thick because I didn't have a real thick stand last year. And because I had broadcasted that native grass seed this past winter, and I knew that I was probably gonna have some, some, um, some new plants, um, some new growth coming on, it really kind of tied my hands with any broadleaf herbicide. We want those native grasses or, or really any grass for the most part to get, you know, to get fully tillering, getting those three to five leaf stage, putting on secondary roots, then we can use some broadleaf herbicides. But I was early enough in the year that I was afraid those those native grass seedlings weren't to that stage. So I came back in with another dose of, of panoramic um, before that ragweed, before those weeds got to the six inches. Once they get above six inches, it's kind of hard to kill with that herbicide. They can be pretty tough, um, but got a good kill. And um, even, you know, if you've been following along, I, I took some, some pictures of uh, areas that I had skipped and you could definitely tell the difference in, in what I had treated and what I haven't. Um, but anyway, so now we're, you know, now we're, you know, um, this year, 2021, I did graze this, um, lightly grazed it for about 30 to 45 days. Um, and you can see I didn't hurt this stand at all. And that was the second year. A lot of folks will, you know, you'll, you'll hear that they don't, don't graze it the second year. Well, if you got a good enough stand and it's all about judgment, um, it, it won't hurt these to put some cows in here. I got them off of fescue for a month, month and a half. Um, was able to kind of help it out and, 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 you know, really utilize this native grass the second year. So I wasn't, wasn't having to wait till that third year, which you'll sometimes hear to really use this grass. Um, but I'm very pleased with this stand. As you can see behind me, got a really good stand, a lot of good seed production. The forage quality is good. Um, you know, these native grasses can really, really put out the tonnage. I will say that I, I did follow soil testing results and, and added the recommended P and K last fall. And I really think that helped out. It really helped the stand, the vigor of this stand. It, it, it seemed like this year, um, the plants really just shot up and, and, and I'll, I'll attribute it to that, some, some of that to the fertility that was added to it, um, as well as just the, you know, the herbicide and the management that was taken. But, um, I think fertility really played a key in P and K helping those roots develop. And, and, um, and I think it shows in this stand, but Anyways, like I said, just want to kind of show you where I'm at. I don't really have many steps left to take from, from an establishment standpoint. I'm to the point now where I, I, you know, I've got good uh, canopy coverage from this native grass. Weed issues shouldn't, shouldn't be too big of a, a, a deal. 
Um, if I need to, I can come back in here with a, you know, about any broadleaf herbicide and, and not affect these native grasses if I've got some issues with weeds. But, you know, I, d I did um, add some diversity to this stand, so I'm, I'm trying not to, at this point, trying not to really do any broadcast applications of herbicide. I, I added some diversity with some forbs and some wildflowers in here. There is some quail on this farm, and so, you know, you know, that's that, that's something that I that I enjoy seeing is the wildlife use, utilizing these native grass fields as, as well as my cattle. So. Um, last thing I wanted to kind of hit on is if you've got some native grass fields, if they're established and you're, and you're managing those fields, you know, a tip that, that we sometimes forget and I need to keep in the back of our mind is, um, you know, when it comes late summer, early fall, we want to make sure that we're getting off of those fields. Um, either we're not haying them or we're pulling them cattle off, you know, anywhere from 30 to 45 days prior to our first average day of frost. And the grazing is not as critical. Um, haying can be if we're taking a real late cutting of hay and I know mother nature throws us a curveball sometimes and we, you know we need the forage we need the hay and that's not gonna you know if you've got an established stand taking a late cutting the hay and and not allowing these plants enough regrowth before frost is not gonna not gonna kill them out completely I wouldn't recommend doing that year after year but if you need to if you're short on you know stored feed supplies you need some hay you need something to graze um, you know doing it once twice every now and then is not gonna hurt them but I but you know the average rule of thumb is to pull off about 30 to 45 days prior to the first day of frost allow them plants to get you know eight to ten inches of regrowth before before they go dormant before we get our frost and really what that allows is those plants take those nutrients then those carbohydrates and storm down in the root system before they before they go dormant and that's what that's what makes these plants these native grasses um, so preferable is that they've got such a deep root system they can withstand droughty conditions and if we're continuously you know cutting those plants off before they go dormant or, or grazing them hard then then we can hurt those roots in a sense kind of hurt the whole point of why we have these native grasses for the for the drought tolerance in the summertime so anyways hope you all enjoyed it um i appreciate you sticking with me and thank you for your time